there are those who maintain the lightning which struck the cathedral did not happen by accident. The consequences of that belief are mind-boggling. There is another form of lightning. Diane de Poitiers was chased by it on her wedding night in 1557. In St. Petersburg, Professor Richmond was killed by it. And at Gorge de Loupe in France in 1901, it disrupted dinner. In 1868, a Viennese eyewitness painted what he saw. At Edinburgh University, it apparently penetrated a window of the meteorology department. In Castleford, England, it was photographed during a storm. It is called ball lightning. Ball lightning is still a major scientific mystery. In fact, until quite recently, many scientists refused to admit that it even existed. This man, Professor Roger Jennison, who is in charge of Kent University's radio telescope, collects ball lightning anecdotes, like the one he experienced on board Eastern Airlines Flight 539 coming into Washington one stormy night. Well, all of a sudden, just after one of the more intense crashes of lightning, there appeared from the pilot's compartment a most beautiful blue ball about the size of a football, near enough the size of a football, a lovely thing, which moved at a slow pace, about this sort of speed, down the aisle of the aircraft, a fast walking pace. I could certainly feel no sensation of, of heat, although it passed at arm's length from my face. I suppose it must have been a few seconds, I can't remember exactly how long thereafter, that the air hostess came clambering up the aisle. She flopped into my lap. She put her arms around my neck, and she said, did you see that St. Elmo's fire? Well, I tried to console her that it wasn't out St. Elmo's fire she'd seen. It's St. Elmo's fire, by the way, are the beautiful corona that you see over the tops of the mass of ships, and things like that. But this indeed was ball lightning. We'd indeed been very, very fortunate to see at very close core quarters ball lightning actually traveling down the middle of a screened aircraft. In Florida, Clara Greenlee describes her experience. Because I was trying to swat a fly that had been around aggravating this for I don't know how long. <laughs> Why, uh, all I, I turned to look at my neighbor, and when I did, why, I seen right outside the screen in that direction, this little, this ball of, of lightning, I didn't know what it was. Why, it appeared, oh, the size of a, probably a basketball, or maybe a little larger. And it sort of, well, the color of it was like orange, more or less. And it had like a halo around the uh, edges of it. So just about the time that I was talking to my neighbor about this fly, it came in and I hit down. And when I did, this ball of lightning, it fell to the floor, rolled around a little, and exploded and made a terrible oh, sound, I guess about like a shotgun. If, and my neighbor looked at me and said, that ought to got him. <laughs> at Los Alamos, birthplace of the atomic bomb, dramatic clues to the mystery of ball lightning have been found by James Tuck. Oh, yeah. Professor Tuck has distilled its characteristics from eyewitness reports. This ball, very characteristically, floats through the air like this. The ball, on the average, is about a foot in diameter. Stories from the U.S. Navy submarine service put Tuck onto an experiment. Submariners told him how clumsy switching of the batteries could produce fireballs, which often burned their legs. Tuck had discovered a gigantic submarine battery, as big as a power station, abandoned on the grounds of Los Alamos. He persuaded some colleagues to help him as he attempted to manufacture ball lightning. We were all behind the sandbags about 100 or 50 feet away from the switchgear. We had the cameras rolling. We took the picture. When it came back from the lab and we examined the last film, to our profound astonishment, there was a, an object on it. We could see the explosion and so on, but there was an object which came along towards us, bounced on the floor, went off the, off the frame. It... Uh, it had a diameter of about 10, say, 3 inches in diameter. It was on 150 frames of, of the film. Both cameras showed it, went behind something and came out again on the other side. It floated. It didn't fade. It kept the same brightness. 
I must say that if, if uh, that it had a lot of characteristics of ball lightning. A small orange globe on a strip of film confirms the eyewitness accounts of ball lightning. But what do we do when we have clear accounts of an occurrence and no one who has actually seen what happened? Like the window broken by this stone. 